The, uh, the next speaker is uh, well known to a New Zealand audience, but for those of you who are from other places and uh, hopefully those of you watching our feed around the world, and I'm not quite sure whether Stephen Fry has been watching our feed or merely tweeting about us, but we have had a, f f uh, a tweet from Stephen Fry, not very complimentary about broadband in New Zealand, I should say. Um, but Paul Brislin is, is, has been the CEO of... Uh, two ANDs uh, since early 2011. A and really, what, rather than anything else, the simplest thing I think to say about that is to, uh, is to remind everyone of what two ANDs' ultimate aim is, according to the papers in front of me, a faster, smarter, more connected New Zealand. So for a 10-minute intro, could I please invite Paul? That's all right, I'll just shuffle over here. Take yes, I've been fielding calls from journalists all uh, all morning about uh, Stephen Fry, who said, um, you know, love your country, love your flat whites, your broadband's awful. Uh, he's trying to upload a video, it's not working, um, it's, it's gone a little bit crazy. But uh, technology, and I've got um, 10 minutes to talk about the three, uh, I've broken it down into three segments. Uh, think of it as the Marley's ghost of broadband, if you will. Uh, near term, medium term, and long term. What are the drivers, what are the technologies that are coming through that really would help uh, drive uptake of this kind of thing? And as Robert so ably put, in the near term, content is, is king. You know, as we move uh, into a world where uh, uh, Everybody wants to get connected to get the content. That is what is really going to drive uptake in a big way. For geeks like us, uh, and I'm calling you all geeks in a friendly way, uh, we're, we're going to sign up anyway, aren't we? We're going to go to 50 megabits a second, 100 megabits a second. That's pretty much a given. But for people like my parents who are sitting at home, they already have the internet. They don't see the need to move to a, uh, a brand shiny new fibre network. They live down a long driveway. There are a lot of issues about digging up the newly laid cobbles. I won't go into technical support needs for my parents because it's quite extensive, but they're not going to move in a hurry, and they're going to have to have a reason to move. And for them, it's likely to be video. It will be Skype. It'll be uh, probably Skype on the Xbox Connect, something like that that's that easy to do that the grandchildren will set it up for them. And the next thing you know, uh, they will stop making phone calls. It'll all be video uh, content and video creation uh, from home, which is Stephen Fry's problem. You can't upload much at the moment. It's all right, Stephen, we're working on that, hopefully, a little bit quickly. Uh, Netflix came out to New Zealand last year at, uh, to a Computer World event, and uh, they had some interesting stats uh, and some interesting usage uh, parameters. Uh, everybody put their hand up immediately after the session and said, what is it going to take to bring Netflix to New Zealand? Uh, the chap in question said three things. We need access to the uh, rights uh, for all of the content. We need to know that uh, you've got a decent broadband capability and uh, you, you need to have demand. There's got to be uh, overwhelming demand. So everybody in the room said, well, the, the demand's taken care of. Don't you worry about that. Uh, what about the broadband? What do you need? The average Netflix customer in the US next, uh, this year will hit one terabyte of data a month, which is, uh, I've just moved my cap, I've doubled my data, I now get 120 gigs of data a month, and I'm feeling pretty good about that, but a terabyte of data is really going to be straining things quite a bit, I think, unless you've got local content distribution networks, unless we've got some way of handling all of that locally. So I know that uh, one of the issues we, we need to discuss in all of this is peering and keeping local content locally. Netflix is an easy model, you know, it, it is exactly what the customers want. The data is, is predominantly one way. Uh, so it's download. So all we need to do is make sure it's available locally. And I know there are a couple of ISPs already hard at work on that kind of thing. Uh, mid, mid term, medium term, what comes after that? Once we've got this network in place, what are we going to do with it? And uh, this is the era I like to think of as IP on everything. Something I once got into a headline in Computer World and was very proud of. IP on everything. We're talking about fridges, toasters, coffee makers, alarms. We've already got the alarms pretty much sewn up. They're already moving to the mobile network. Uh, your cell phone, of course, your car, your air conditioning. What are you going to do with all of that once it's hooked up? And I'll tell you, I'll share a little story that uh, Ericsson uh, talked us through a few years ago. Um, uh, cheap RFID tags made out of paper sitting on the bottom of your uh, milk carton. I take the milk carton out of my fridge. The fridge notices that I don't put the milk carton back. So it then alerts my wallet, which might be on my cell phone, might be a real-world wallet, uh, and it tells me that uh, I'm all out of milk. 
Next time I'm driving uh, past the supermarket, my phone says, oh, by the way, you need to call in and get some milk. And as I'm walking down the aisle of the supermarket, the little milk cartons are ringing out saying, don't forget the milk, we're on special, 10% off. So, uh, you know, it's an, it, it can be a little bit alarming. Uh, if you're like me, you're thinking, well, I'm not entirely sure I want to live in a world where my milk bottles are talking to my fridge. However, the upside of that is uh, that we are going to need to... F we've got a lot of demand. There's another one. Sorry, I'll just switch that off. Go away, journalist. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, uses for the internet that we don't currently have. And, and the world of connected devices is really where the future lies. 50 billion devices uh, by 2050 is what Ericsson's predicting. And I think that's probably a conservative measure uh, if you think about the capability that's out there. Uh, we're also looking at a world where um, we are now uh, ensuring that we un we, when we sell our meat, for instance, overseas, uh, we know that it is New Zealand meat that's being sold. It's got to be trackable, it's got to be traceable, and uh, we're talking about measuring everything from the gate to the plate so that you can be sure that when you're buying your New Zealand lamb in London, it is actually New Zealand lamb. All of that comes at a, a cost, an overhead in terms of data use that we simply don't have today. So I'm quite looking forward to that. But there's a new one on the way, uh, 3D printing. Uh, and I don't know if you're Pirate Bay users. Hands up, go on, you're all Pirate Bay users, one way or another. Yes, we'll get to you all. Uh, Fizzables. This is a new category they've introduced and is really uh, uh, potentially going to revolutionise manufacturing in much the way that the internet's revolutionised everything else it's touched. Uh, 3D printing at home. Today it'll be forks and chess pieces. Tomorrow, who knows, we'll be printing off uh, devices, um, integrated circuit boards for your computer, whole computers, who knows where it'll go. But the moving decentralization of manufacturing is, uh, is something that is going to come along quite quickly. And then, of course, we get to the really scary stuff when we get further afield. And if you think about the IT industry, it too is not standing still. Uh, we're looking at a world where the processing power and the storage capability of the devices is increasing so dramatically that uh, we're reaching uh, almost a turning point in human civilization. And it's not to put too fine a point on it. There's a chap called Ray Kurzweil who is on to about his third or fourth uh, fortune by now. He uh, helped create the synthesizer, the music synthesizer with Stevie Wonder. He's gone on from there. His big thing now is the singularity uh, and artificial intelligence. And the way the IT curve is going, if you take a look at how, you know, Moore's law, we double the processing capability more or less every 18 months. If you take that out to its logical conclusion, by 2013, 2014, we're going to be looking at supercomputers that can replicate the processing power of the human brain. And you take that out even further with the price reductions that are going on as well over that time period. Uh, by 2045, uh, $1,000 will buy you a computer that can replicate all of our brains. Now, that's the processing capability of an entire population of people uh, within our lifetimes in a device that uh, you can fit in your pocket. That is going to revolutionise the way we use uh, the internet. It's going to revolutionise a lot of other things as well. But that's the path we're on. And it's really quite important that we remember that all of these things are happening in concert and in step. And they all rely on a good, solid broadband network infrastructure. Broadband is all too often used as, uh, as if it's a noun, it's a thing, it's something we can buy. Uh, but people don't want that. It's an adjective. It describes what we're going to be doing. Broadband television, broadband manufacturing, and ultimately broadband people as well. So uh, with that as an idea for the next 50 years, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. Thank you very much.